Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. In the Ripple case, Attorney Deaton recently brought up the SEC shifting stance on the Carmen Enterprise defense. To that end, why is Ripple still holding on to its XRP reserves instead of destroying them all? In addition, Terra's attorney, Deaton, has praised the publication of the latest document. Finally, recent rumors have surfaced within the XRP camp in the wake of the publication of documents linking Ripple to a blockchain policy paper in Korea. The extent to which this is accurate, however, is not yet known. Read on to the conclusion for more information. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission has been attacked by Attorney John, a prominent legal advocate for favorable crypto laws, for shifting its position on the common enterprise argument in the SEC Ripple case. The Howey test is used by the SEC to establish if a transaction involves a security, and one of its criteria is whether or not the parties involved share a common enterprise. Yesterday, in a post on Twitter, Crypto Law's progenitor Attorney Deaton referred to the SEC's shifting position on the common business argument as the schizophrenic defense. The SEC first claimed that Ripple operated as a public company. However, the securities watchdog apparently changed its mind after Ripple demonstrated that XRP holders did not get any interest in the company merely by holding the token, as per Deaton's claims. The SEC shifted its position since the whole XRP ecosystem functions as a single sector. Therefore, the XRP ecosystem consists of all XRP holders, all exchanges that list XRP globally, and all merchants that accept payment. According to Deaton, who produced an amicus curie friend of the court brief on behalf of XRP holders, the SEC tried to bolster this claim by calling an expert witness to testify that all XRP holders depend on Ripple's efforts to achieve gains. This claim was supported by the 3,000 affidavits provided by Ripple and the evidence provided by Deaton. It's worth noting that the judge disregarded the expert's opinion because of the XRP holders' input. Since the second argument was dismissed, Deaton contended that the SEC had established a new standard business theory in the Ripple case. This time around, it was said that XRP represents collective effort, despite the fact that it is itself a program. Deaton confirmed that this was really their logical line of argument. The schizophrenic defense, if you will. Many in the XRP community and other prominent legal minds voiced their opinions in response to Deaton's recent declaration, including attorney Bill Morgan. In response to the tweet, Morgan said that the parties in the Ripple case do not have a same enterprise. He argued that the SEC's case against Ripple should be dropped because it failed the Howey test. Joint Business Initiative It's worth noting that Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderati, recently referred to the SEC's common enterprise defense in the complaint. This past weekend, Alderati brought up the SEC's attempt to convince the court in the Howey case in 1946 that investment in a joint venture was necessary so long as there was a shared interest. A single business endeavor does not constitute a shared interest, according to Ripple's general counsel. If you want to be among the first to know about any XRP-related updates, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Matt Hamilton, a software developer, was formerly Ripple's principal developer advocate. It was recently disclosed that Ripple has the ability to destroy all XRP held in its escrow wallets. When asked about the significance of the company's XRP currency in the ongoing action with the SEC, Hamilton made this response. Hamilton was a part of Ripple's developer relations team for almost a year. He explained that Ripple has the option of removing the master key from the designated accounts after the escrow tokens have been distributed. Hamilton underlined that Ripple may publicly lock them out of all of their future escrow monies, effectively burning them right now. The dispute over Hamilton's admission stemmed from the ongoing litigation between the SEC and LBI. The SEC has filed a case against LBI Inc. Asking the court to prevent the corporation from selling digital assets until all of the credit tokens it now possesses have been destroyed. One XRP backer asked Ripple's CTO David Schwartz if the business has to take the same steps with the XRP tokens it has escrowed. There was some back and forth on whether or not the court or the SEC could force Ripple to burn the escrow tokens, but some parties maintained that this was not possible. Others argued this issue using Schwartz's previous statements that validators could vote to burn the tokens if a consensus is reached. 
In December 2020, Schwartz said that if validators decide to have the escrowed funds burn, Ripple will be obligated to do so, as previously reported by Crypto Basic. In reaction to the recent comments on validator consensus, some people underlined that Ripple might convince XRPL validators to vote in favor of the burn if the judge ordered it pro. XRP lawyer Bill Morgan argued that even if the judge issued such an order, the validators would be under no obligation to carry it out. Morgan emphasized that XRP validators have a right to a hearing before Judge Annalisa Torres can order them to comply with the injunction. Author, Brad Garlinghouse remember that. During an interview in April 2021, Ripple's CEO indicated that the Silicon Valley Corporation was considering burning all of the XRP tokens in its escrow wallets if doing so would benefit the XRP ecosystem. In addition, John Deaton, the inventor of crypto law and a supporter for XRP, has praised Fox Business reporter Alina Terra for publishing a piece describing preparations for a large crypto crackdown in the United States. Fox Business senior journalists Deaton and Charles Gasparino referred to Tara as the crypto child in a tweet yesterday, after she exposed the Democrats' antagonistic stance toward the emerging asset. Deaton has also lauded Gasparino for his efforts to get Tara the credit she deserves. In light of today's joint hearing on crypto policy, Tara shared a letter that was sent to Democratic members of the House Financial Services Committee in the United States yesterday. Unprecedented in the cryptocurrency industry. Democratic MP are instructed in the text to adopt policies that would regulate crypto assets as securities. According to the memo, Democratic representatives were asked to counter Republican claims that the bill would help bring clarity to the market and provide the Commodity Futures Trading Commission with an entry point into crypto regulation. The pamphlet claims that these statements show that Republican politicians do not care about protecting American investors and consumers. Democratic lawmakers have serious reservations about whether or not crypto assets will comply with existing legislation. The letter makes it crystal obvious that widespread non-compliance with the law is the problem, not ambiguity, and that this is due to the fact that Bitcoin businesses simply refuse to follow the rules of the road as they have been established. In terms of establishing unambiguous cryptographic regulations, we are unable to develop novel adaptable regulatory structures. According to the portion from the document that Forbes has been publishing since last year, the United States is falling behind most other countries. The United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, and other countries have taken the initiative to define strict cryptography standards. President Joe Biden issued an executive order mandating a coordinated federal response to the rise of cryptocurrencies. Because of this, the SEC has been promoting itself as the leading cryptocurrency regulator, bypassing the CFTC in the process. Chairman Gary Gensler has said that with the exception of Bitcoin, all cryptocurrencies are securities. Tech's leaked memo shows how Democrats were swayed to back the SEC as the goal to Bitcoin regulator. The Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, is the agency in charge of determining whether or not crypto assets are securities, the SEC has made it clear that virtually all crypto assets are securities. The SEC and the CFTC concur, according the paper. But due to the SEC's severe enforcement operations against the emerging market, most crypto players, including Ripple's CEO Brad Garlinghouse, do not think the SEC should be the regulator of the industry. Despite the scrutiny from major crypto stakeholders, the paper insists that the SEC must continue to take the lead in US regulation. Trading Bitcoins At Wednesday's joint hearing, Democratic lawmakers may or may not follow the memo's directions. Documents have surfaced linking Ripple to a Korean blockchain policy paper, and this has sparked much speculation over whether or not the recent XRP camp story is true. There have been whispers that Ripple is establishing a blockchain ecosystem in South Korea, and this has piqued the interest of the community. These claims emerged at the same time as the publishing of evidence linking Ripple to a blockchain policy paper in the nation. Edward Farina, an advocate of XRP and the founder of the Crypto Trading Community Academy, initially brought this to light when he referenced a document excerpt purporting to establish a partnership between Oxford, Metrica Korea, and Ripple. The document is notable for its discussion of Ripple's role in facilitating payments via RippleNet and GVC Korea, a blockchain firm based in South Korea. An approach is discussed that makes use of Korea's platform to aid retail investors in M and a transactions. There were responses after the latest information became public. 
Many people were thrilled by the news of the discovery, but others were more skeptical. In particular, Radolf Kahneman, a prominent member of the XRP community, provided more context about the document's origins by saying that the quoted passage comes from a March 2022 South Korean blockchain policy paper authored by Oxford, Metrica Korea, and Ripple. This policy document highlighted the partnership between Ripple and Korea in the crypto basic last year. It had not yet become clear whether or not Korea will deepen its partnership with Ripple to employ XRP or RippleNet on its platform is an open question, as discussed by Radov Kahneman. The Global M and a platform, a Korean blockchain-based project that just started, makes it possible for individual investors to take part in merger and acquisition deals. It is the first global platform that allows anyone to invest in M and a projects, at least according to the Korean government. From the current data, it is unclear whether Ripple plans to enter the South Korean market or provide blockchain-based payment solutions to the country. Neither company has made a public statement on the matter. Radolf Kahneman countered that GBK presence on Ripple's friend layer is highly beneficial. Since Ripple previously worked with GBK, rumors have spread in Korea about the company expanding its operations there. However, the company hasn't confirmed or denied these reports, and therefore they remain just that. This video has now come to a close, gentlemen. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive alerts. See you later, bye.